when you're talking JRPGs, you know, everybody has their own preferences. Some people are strategy people, some people are action people, some people are turn-based people. And, you know, everybody has a different opinion on what they consider a 10 out of 10 JRPG. Um, so, you know what? I decided that today I'm going to jump in the ring, put my gloves on, and tell you guys five 10 out of 10 JRPGs, in my opinion. Um, I'm not going to include uber popular RPGs, like, for example, my favorite Final Fantasy and my favorite video game of all time is Final Fantasy 7. Uh, Dragon Quest 11, I also think it's a 10 out of 10. Like, obviously, if you haven't played those games, go ahead and play them. But, you know, those are legacy, legendary, iconic games that you've already heard 10 million times. So, you know, I wanted to make the list a little bit cuter, a little bit more fun. So, yeah, hopefully you find something you haven't played in this list. And if you've played everything, then, hey, you have amazing taste. Um, so, anyways, my first game is going to be Nino Kuni. Wrath of the White Witch. So, at the time of this recording, it is 2024. I played this game for the first time in 2024 in January. It was the first game I played hot off the tracks of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I played, I beat that around Christmas time. Then I jumped on this one, really not expecting much. I was expecting a filler-ish game, but oh my god, did it deliver in more ways than one. This game was absolutely magical. From the art style that grabbed me from the beginning, to the gameplay that was giving a little bit of Final Fantasy XII vibes. Um, you know, auto combat, auto battler, but also with some strategy involved in there. Uh, and then I was like, oh my god, is a creature collector? I have no idea. Uh, Drippy being one of my favorite JRPG characters ever to this day. I absolutely love that thing, that ball, that fairy. He is so funny. Um, the settings you go to, the world map, the... The, the, like, the dungeons and the boss fights and the story, like, the story really tugged at my heartstrings. Like, I was proper, properly addicted to this game all the way through. Um, I think I beat it, like, in no time flat. I, I sunk 50 hours on, like, day one. You know, it was one of those games. And, and yeah, man, this is, a, this is a great, great, great game. It is one that I will easily give 10 out of 10. I gave it a 10 out of 10 back then. I give it a 10 out of 10 now. I'll probably give it 10 out of 10 in 10 years. This is a great, great, great JRPG. All right, number two. This is my GOAT. This is my favorite game on the 3DS. Hot take? I don't know. But it is none other than Yokai Watch 2. Now listen, okay? I consume, I watch a lot of JRPG content on YouTube, okay? I, I, I'm not even going to name anybody, but I watch most of them, most of the big names, and none of them have mentioned Yokai Watch 2. Why not? Why not? Why are we not talking about Yokai Watch? Why are we not talking about the greatest JRPG on the 3DS? We need more people to play this game. All Honestly, all three of them are amazing, but this one, in my opinion, is my favorite. Yokai Watch 2 is everything that I loved about the first game. It has the first game's combat, which if you've never played a Yokai Watch game, it's like a, you use your stylus. It's very it's very touch based, and there's a wheel in the bottom of the screen where you spin uh, your party around. You're gonna have up to six, but only three at a time. And yeah, they auto battle, so you play more of a tactician. You let them battle. You let them use their your their skills, while you're over here collecting items, feeding them, using their ultimates. It's very involved. Um, the enemy can like hurt your wheel so then you have to like do mini games to break your wheel free and it's it although it's an auto battler in a way um there's a lot of fun to be had in the battles and from in my opinion the the best part about the game is again it's a creature collector you collect these yokai watch spirits they're all super interesting super goofy um they're all based on like real japanese mythology so you know for me for a stupid dude living in the united states like a lot of these go over my head but the designs are really really cool anyways um and you know i mean come on what creature collector can you play as a can you have in your party a grandpa okay a grandpa that eats rice balls in the same party as a cat that has an airplane on his head oh man i love yokai watch the music is amazing uh you know the story we're not you know, it's, it's serviceable. You know, we're not really doing it for the story. It's mostly the gameplay, the team building, the customization, the yokai designs. Just everything about Yokai Watch 2, I absolutely adore. I played that like, game to death, and I, I'll still do it to this day. I absolutely love Yokai Watch 2. Okay, so my next, my next RPG, my next JRPG. Now, this is how you know this is not an ordered list, or else this would be number one. 
Trails in the Sky, specifically second chapter, okay? I know in the top of the video I said I'm not going to do any, any iconic legendary JRPGs, but come on, any excuse to talk about Trails to get more people to play Trails, I'm there, okay? I'm there. So, Trails in the Sky SC is actually the second chapter or the second game in the Trails series, and it's not one that I would recommend to jump into it right away. If you're watching this video for whatever reason you've never played Trails, first of all, pause this video, stop watching, go get Sky FC on your computer, or pick up Cold Steel on the PlayStation, and have fun and have the time of your life. Um, but yeah, anyways, the reason why I love Trails in the Sky SC is that it does everything, oh my god, the story, the characters, I'm just gonna say, Estelle Bright, okay, Estelle Bright, now don't spoil me in the comments, I'm only on Cold Steel 3, Estelle Bright is my, not only my favorite main character in Trails, she's my favorite main character in the entire scope of gaming, okay, I absolutely adore Estelle Bright, your protagonist for the first two games, and the reason why I love SC so much more than FC is that FC, which is the first chapter of the first game, really just sets up the the universe of trails and also sets up the character arc of this character is still bright you know you're doing a lot of character development a lot of meeting her friends a lot of meeting the world and you know it, it takes its time now i'm not gonna say it's a bad game because i love fc some people prefer fc over over anything and you know that that's cool the, the vibes are very cozy the stakes are low there's something really nice to be said about games that you know set the tone a little bit lower are more chill or more fun you know your atelier games and stuff like that i think the first game does that really well but the second game is like okay you've already met these characters you already know who they are you already know where we are let's let's get the ball rolling and that to me is what makes sc so good the pacing is phenomenal you spent 60 hours with these characters already you already know no need to introduce no need to restay stuff like the game expects that you've already played fc at least twice just kidding but you know it expects you to you've played the game already so they don't they don't hold your hand they don't really explain you anything unless it's like new stuff and the story just develops right there the second game sc picks up literally minutes like hours days whatever it picks up right 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 after the the first game ended and um you know most most sequels is like oh you know a few months later or you're in a completely different setting or but no this one is like oh like i push disc two basically i put disc two and that just strengthens its pacing because um it, you're basically playing mid to end game in one rpg from the beginning and you know obviously mid to end game can be the most exciting parts of rpgs so yeah i absolutely love trails in the sky sc i love trails in general um i didn't want to li limit myself for one game per franchise so you know this whole list would be trails games honestly i absolutely love trails but yeah, go play Trails, Trails in the Sky FC, then play this one, and then, you know, thank me later. All right, next game is an amazing game, okay? A game that I played for the first time last year was my game of the year last year. Let me think about that. Yes, was my game of the year last year, and it is an amazing game. It's my favorite action RPG, and it is another Falcom developed RPG. So, you know, there we go, showing Falcom love. It is East 8, Lacrimosa of Donna, Lacrimosa of Peak. Okay, I absolutely love East 8, okay? This is one of those games where, you know, I was on my Steam library because I played this game on Steam. And I sorted my games th through Metacritic score, right? Which is like, I don't really care about Metacritic, but it just, it was interesting that it was an option. Can you believe that East 8 got a 68? A 68 on Metacritic. This goes to show that we should not be trusting these reviewers, okay? Make your own opinion if the game looks cool. No, but I'm not gonna get into that. But like that was really interesting. Like, really? I give this game an 100, so you're giving it a 68. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But yes, East 8. What can I say about this game that hasn't been said before? It is an absolutely magical adventure. The sense of exploration, you know, when 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 I tell you, oh, this game has exploration, right? What do you think? Like the the essence of that word is what this game is you are effectively stranded in an island with a boat a, a nice cruise ship that crashed on the shore you are tasked to not only save and find the people around the island but really just explore the island and figure it out um obviously it gets a lot more interesting than that 
um, there's quite a bit of twist in this game. Um, there's quite a bit of twist in this game. There's quite a bit of mysteries to be had in this island to really figure out what this island is really about. Um, and, you know, just from the exploration, from the music, a phenomenal soundtrack. One of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Um, you know, once you're just walking around exploring the combat system, it's so fluid. Um, you know, there's no arenas that when you enter... Uh, when you find an opponent you don't just like you know on some tails like you don't like go to a separate arena i love tails by the way um you you fight everything right then and there you know you keep it moving you roll your dodge rolls parry your mechanic there's a dodge out of the way mechanic there's skills there's party members this game does action rpg better than any any game that i've ever played it's not even close honestly like when i when i beat this game i was like oh yeah this is the best action jrpg I've ever played like easily bar none great game you can start with this one don't let the a intimidate you it's not like trails this one can be started any any east game can be played at any time um so yeah go ahead and play east 8 absolutely love this game um and yeah east 8 is awesome all right my final game on the list is valkyria chronicles 1 okay this is the only game i've played on the franchise so you know maybe maybe four is better um i know two and three are a little controversial um but I know 4 and 1 are held in pretty much the, the same standard. So, you know, I'm excited to jump into 4 eventually. But, you know, backlog is what it is. Um, so, anyways, Valkyria Chronicles 1, I really, really enjoyed it. Again, I also played it for the first time last year. Was my runner-up for Game of the Year last year. And it is uh, one of the most interesting strategy games in terms of setting and gameplay that I've ever played. So, you're effectively playing a world war that's like you know it's a fictional world war right it's not like a historical fiction where like oh i'm america and stuff but obviously like you know there's still guns tanks um artillery like all stuff like that but it's very it's not gritty it's it's almost like in, in a weird way it's, i know i'm talking about a war but it's almost like cutesy <laughs> like i mean I'm, I'm showing gameplay on the screen if you've never seen this game before this is what it looks like um and the gameplay is tactics based but you know not like your fire emblem grid based um it's it's also not like an rts either it's kind of a blend of both where like you you take like third person perspective command of each unit and you run and you know you take turns so everybody waits for you but you run and then you can like hunker down you can shoot your opponent and you, there's also like an aiming element like you actually have to aim to hit the opponent um you know if you have a sniper you have the scope if you have a shotgun you have to get close if you have a little baby rifle you have to like every unit plays differently some units can travel far some units can't you even have access to a tank um and you know it's it's a really really like a strategy rpg with you know very anime moments but in a like world war setting like it's very interesting i don't really want to like say more because i feel like um you know if, if this is like your type of game go ahead you know you can pretty much immediately tell if you're gonna enjoy this game by looking at the gameplay like is this something that you would like um you know, don't worry about the aiming by the way you don't have to be super precise and it gives you all the time in the world i'm not the best aimer especially in controller which i played this game on a controller i suck at aiming i was able to do just fine but yeah Valkyria chronicles great story great characters very interesting gameplay amazing just overall package i think this is a great great game great game um and one that's deserving of a 10 out of 10 i love this game all right thank you so much for watching my video on five jrpgs i would give a 10 out of 10 to this was a really fun video to make i really want to start making more jrpg related videos um this being my first one you know next up i have a lot more ideas so i'm excited to to make these videos um but yeah hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you found something awesome to play and if you did let me know which one and you know it'd be awesome bye